Hey everybody, welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today we're going to go over all the cool releases that are coming out in the month of April. This one is pretty big. I had to condense it down to 20 volumes of what I think are the most anticipated manga. So let's get started. First one that we're going to talk about on this video is that time I got reincarnated as a slime omnibus volume one. This Omni contains the first three volumes of the series and features story by Fuse with illustrations by Taiki Kawakami. If you don't know about this series, that time I got reincarnated as a slime starts this middle aged man that is murdered accidentally after he tries to save somebody in the street. He's stabbed to death at only 37 years of age. I'm not even 37. That's insane. So now he wakes up in this new world and he is a slime creature, which are known to be one of the weaker ones in any JRPG that you might play. It is a lot of fun. It has some really cool characters and I love the idea of this underpowered individual slowly becoming this overpowered monster and how he is able to unite different species and create sort of this idea Delix society. I'm underselling it honestly because there's a lot more to it. There are really cool characters and fights and uh, world building with the different human characters and the different realms and creatures and all that, but I do recommend it. It is honestly one of my favorite modern isekai and this is a great way to collect the series, the omnibus editions. Unfortunately, I will be skipping it because I am up to date with the releases and the current ones are the same trim size as this omnibus so not much of a loss there for me aside from the minimal shelf space but i do recommend it slime is a great one check it out the first omnibus coming out from kodansha Square Enix is putting out a shonen series and it is Victoria's Electric Coffin Volume 1. This ran back from April 2021 until May of 2022. It's a supernatural historical shonen series with story and art by Ikuno Tajima. I should mention that this ran for 16 chapters, so this will be collected across three volumes. David Douglas wishes he'd never been born. What's the point of a slum boy enduring a miserable existence and ending up on death row. Victoria Frankenstein, a 13-year-old medical doctor, offers him a change of fate. Together they can help people and prove the worth of Victoria's invention, the electric coffin. After David becomes Eins, what kind of life will this second chance offer? I do like the sounds of this. I want to check it out. I love me some supernatural historical goodness and of course mixing in the lore and mythos of Frankenstein. Hopefully the monster shows up at some point. Point, right? Back to Kodansha for a little bit. We have here Bless Volume 1. This is an ongoing shonen series written and drawn by Yukino Sonoyama. At a young age, Aya Utagawa was scouted as a model, but his real ambition is to become a makeup artist. But even as the end of high school approaches, it's a dream he hides inside, afraid of stepping outside his prescribed role as a pretty face. Then one day he meets June, a quiet classmate who hunches because she's ashamed of her face, covered in freckles. He convinces her to enter a school runway fashion contest together, with him doing her makeup. They make an incredible team, with June discovering a confidence she never knew she could show, and Aya finally learning that, while it may be tough to open yourself up to failing at one thing you care about, the difficulties can be worth facing. I didn't know about this series until I read the description for it while making this video, and I am I'm genuinely intrigued. I love the plot. The fact that it's talking about the makeup industry is great. I want to think you don't see that often in manga, so it's pretty cool. And I love the themes here of overcoming your doubts and fears, moving forward, and becoming a better person as a result. I definitely can get behind that. From Seven Seas Entertainment, we have a boys love manga, Nagahama to be or not to be, written and drawn by Scarlett Beriko. This is a 
one and done volume, six chapters, which ran last year from January to September of 2023, and it tells the story of Nagisa. He may look like a delinquent, but he's just a typical teen trying to figure out what to do with his life. Nagisa's best friend, Isa, already knows what his passion is, fish. Isa often skips school to work at the Nagahama fish market, and the two boys hang out near the ocean almost every day. When Nagisa suspects that Isa has a girlfriend, it turns his world upside down. Is he in love with his best friend? Could his best friend possibly like him back? For some reason, I like the plot, but I thought this was going to be a fishing manga and not about like the actual fish and the market, but it sounds pretty interesting nonetheless. Uh, let me know if you're interested in Nagahama to be or not to be. We got a big profile release. This one comes from Viz Media. It is Kimi no Todoke from me to you, Soulmate Volume 1. This is written and drawn by Karuho Shina. It ran for 13 chapters back in 2018 up to 2022. This romance shoujo series was collected across three volumes and it continues the story of Kimi no Todoke. This is the sequel starring Sawako and her former rival Kurumi now in college. With her jet black hair, sinister smile, and silent demeanor, Sawako Sadako Kuronuma always had trouble fitting in during high school. But with help from her friends, her boyfriend Kazehaya, and even her rival turned friend Kurumi, Sawako came out of her shell. Now in college, Sawako and Kurumi have become incredibly close, but Kurumi longs for a romance of her own. Despite considering herself unlovable and despite feeling deeply satisfied with Sawako's companionship, Kurumi decides to put herself out there and try dating. When she's pestered by a persistent suitor after a party, a handsome stranger comes to her rescue. He looks suspiciously like Sawako, or not so suspicious, considering that he is actually Sawako's cousin. When Kurumi starts to feel drawn to him, could it be love? Now normally I don't recommend sequels in these types of videos, but I feel like this is a pretty big enough release that it is actually anticipated by a lot of people, so if you can check out the original, Kimi ni Todoke, then you can jump into this one, or you can check out the anime adaptation and then come back and get the Soulmate sequel series. Now this next one is also pretty highly anticipated by a lot of people. It even made my list of the most anticipated releases of 2024, which reminds me I will be doing an update for that video covering the later half of 2024 with all the cool announcements that have been made. But we're here to talk about Tales of the Tendo Family Volume 1. This is a drama shoujo series that is still ongoing in Japan. We have 14 volumes over there and it is being brought to us by the folks at One Piece Books. This is written and drawn by Ken Saito. Masato, a son of the Tendo family, is meant to marry Hojo Ran, the daughter of a baron. There's just one problem. She's a fake. The real Ran has fled after hearing that few make it out of the Tendo family alive. In her place is a young woman who says she will die if it means saving someone else's life. I don't know about you, but I'm up for some good drama romance, and this is right up that alley, so I can't wait to dig into the first volume of this popular series. We got a new North American manga publisher, and that is awesome to celebrate. It is Alien Books, which you might know from their partnership with Valiant Comics, for example, publishing those Western graphic novels. But now they're getting into the manga game and they announced a couple series. The first two are coming out this month, and we got the scoop here. Here is Fake Rebellion Volume 1. This is written and drawn by Yu Chang Sazaki. It first began publication in Japan back in 2018. This is a drama sci-fi seinen series and it tells the story of how the human empire fell to ruin, leaving behind a dystopia controlled by the current machinery empire. In this wasteland where human life is deemed worthless, a wandering boy meets a princess in hiding. When tragedy occurs, the fallen rise and a journey begins. Thus commences the story of two children and their fight to restore hope for humanity. 
looking forward to this one. Sounds pretty epic. I'm excited for the possibilities and I wish Alien Books the best of luck going out there and publishing more manga for us to consume. From Titan Manga, I cannot believe I skipped the announcement last year and I found out a month ago because this was delayed. This was supposed to come out in March, but here we have Three Exorcism Siblings Volume 1 and you're probably wondering why am I excited for this one? Well, this is written and drawn by Shinta Harekawa. It ran for seven volumes or 60 chapters in Japan back from 2021 to last year actually, summer of 2023. This is an action fantasy series about Mamoru Yamayamori who spends his days tending to his family shrine, fighting Tengu, monsters who feast on human flesh. If you know me, you know I'm already excited for this. And making sure his two younger brothers will never have to pick up his mantle unable to escape the life forced upon by his parents and a dark ritual involving Tengu blood. All he knows is that his existence is a curse. He is destined to die young in the service of others. But to fight monsters, Mamoru must dance that line between loving older brother and mindless beast, or else he risks becoming what he is sworn to destroy. I love the art on this. I love the story. Cannot wait to have this in my collection and review it on one of my videos. Let's switch back to Alien Books, shall we? We have the second release, and that is Enroll Back Volume 1. This is written by Kantetsu with art by Haruna Nakazato. This ran in Japan back in December of 2019 up until March of 2021 for 13 chapters collected across three volumes. This is a drama slash supernatural series that follows the suicide of Yuka, a victim of bullying. Her brother Asaharu becomes disappointed in himself and encounters an angel. That angel proceeds to offer him a deal. Find the person who drove his sister to her death within three months in order to resurrect her. However, nothing is done without compensation. With every mistake that Asaharu makes, his life expectancy will decrease. Is his sister's life more valuable than his own? The hunt for the criminal begins. So yeah, there's a little bit of some content warning there. So proceed with caution, but I genuinely think this sounds really interesting. I like the supernatural aspect to it. I'm sure it's going to have a lot of twists and turns. The story is a little bit dark, but hopefully great by the end of it. From Kodansha, we have Sketchy Volume 1. The Seinen series is a slice of life sports manga that is still ongoing, written and drawn by Maki Hirochi. This one tells of Eiko, who finds herself coasting along, watching her 20s pass her by, work at the video rental store, see her boyfriend, repeat. Her days are becoming an indistinguishable listless blur until she encounters a skateboarder practicing a trick and she's a girl. For some reason, Eiko feels a pull towards the sport. Slowly, all the dreams and ambitions she gave up on and the future she imagined for herself come flooding back and Eiko resolves to change herself now before it's too late. But is it ever really too late to discover something new? I was really intrigued by the cover. It spoke indie comic to me and I like that it's a sports meets slice of life story with skateboarding. We rarely get skateboarding manga so it's always nice to see. I'm not a huge fan of the sport but typically manga like this can be really appealing so definitely be on the lookout for this one. I do know that at least two more volumes are already solicited for this year if you're interested in Sketchy. From Sublime, we have Engage Volume 1, story and art by Yu Minaduki. Now this is not safe for work and it tells of a young chef confessing his love to a mysterious and attractive older stranger. He's drawn into a deep web of intrigue and buried family history that could threaten his attraction to the only man he's ever loved. The highlight of Chef Mei Zuzumori's year is the Tanabata Festival, the one day a year when a pair of mythical lovers reunites. For Mei, it's the day that a mysterious handsome stranger visits his adopted family's restaurant to buy tasty seasonal taiyaki. Unable to hold his feelings for the attractive stranger, Mei professes his love and finds he's linked to the enigmatic Naru by a bond much deeper and more complicated than he ever imagined. 
And I should point out that this BL series started back in 2021 and it is still ongoing. Next up, we have The Fable Omnibus Edition Volume 1. This is being published by Kodansha. This is a famous seinen series written and drawn by Katsuhisa Minami. This was released back in 2014 and it ran for 240 chapters collected across 22 volumes. These omnibus editions will be two in ones and this tells the story of the man called The Fable, a self-proclaimed genius at killing. The mention of his codename strikes fear into the hearts of every Yakuza in Japan. His talent has brought him everything he could want. Money, respect, purpose. But this is no legend. He's just a man, a rather irritating man, who loves stupid jokes and bad television. After a bloody period of gang enforcement in Tokyo, the Fable's boss advises him to lie low and enjoy his earnings for a while. So begins the Fable's toughest mission yet, a full year living a normal life at the other end of the bullet train in Osaka. It's a mission he takes on with his usual professionalism and rigor, but can the Osaka mob let this legend rest, or will they be unable to resist pulling him back into the underworld? Also, FYI, this has an anime adaptation airing pretty soon as of me making this video, so if you're interested in this manga and you don't know if you're gonna commit to buying a lengthy omnibus release like this, maybe consider watching the show, and if you like what you see, come back and get the original source material. That's always the best way I can recommend something to somebody. From Yen Press, we have My Gemini. This shoujo series is written and drawn by Yu Morikawa, and if you know about this author, they are the same creator from Mr. Villain's Day Off. So if you like that series, you'll be right at home with My Gemini. It ran for 14 chapters back in May 2019 up until November of 2020. This is a mystery shoujo series and it is going to be collected in one single volume. Plain, redheaded, and freckled John has nothing going for him except his two friends who are incredibly popular at school, twins Jekyll and Hyde. The twins, indistinguishable from each other, have always enjoyed taking each other's places for fun, but when the pair is fragmented by an untimely death, it's up to John to find out which twin is left. Honestly, this sounds pretty interesting. I do want to check it out. I will definitely be adding this to my buy list. The big hits keep on rolling. We got another high profile release. This is from Viz Media. We have the sci-fi action adventure seinen series from Yuhiro Sujitsugu. It is Snowball Earth Volume 1. In the year 2025, huge beast from beyond the galaxy attacked Earth. In the war that followed, humanity fought back with a giant robot named Yukio, piloted by Tetsuo Yabusame, a boy barely old enough to go to school. Ten years later, Later, the massive alien swarm closed in on humanity's homeworld, Tetsuo, and the Earth Defense Force deployed for the final battle with the invading horde. They lost. Yukio was destroyed in battle, and Tetsuo survived in an escape pod. After eight years in cold sleep, the escape pod finally lands back on Earth, and Tetsuo awakens, determined to fulfill his promise to his comrade in arms that he would live his life to the fullest and make many friends. But what he finds instead is a world in ruins entirely frozen beneath a blanket of ice and snow. A snowball Earth. What happened to humanity? How did the Earth freeze over? And will Tetsuo be able to keep his last promise to Yukio? This is the right combination of absurd premise, aliens, and you got sci-fi elements, mecha and robots and all that fun stuff. Sign me up. I can't wait to check this out. From Seven Seas, we have an omnibus release. This is I Want You to Make Me Beautiful, the complete omnibus edition. It first got published in Japan back in August of 2021 and ran for 10 chapters until March of 2022. This is a drama Jose series written by Kokoa. This complete omnibus edition collects the two single volumes released in Japan and it tells the story of office lady Nishimura Kana who has had it with her 
boyfriend after discovering his cheating ways. When she breaks up with him, he insults her looks, bruising her self-confidence on top of breaking her heart. Then she runs into an old classmate, the androgynous Ichikawa Yuzuki, a man whose gorgeous appearance is a sharp difference from the boyish classmate Kana remembers from their school days. She ends up pretending to be Yuzuki's girlfriend too. As things get hot and heavy between them, can a beautiful romance blossom from this fake relationship? Oh boy, here we have another high profile release, Goku Rakugai Volume 1. This action fantasy shonen series is written and drawn by Yuto Sano. For the right price, these professional troubleshooters can solve any problems, whether they're taking out the scum of the earth or destroying human eating monsters. The troubleshooters of Goku Rakugai are open for business. In a rundown town without law and order, Tao and Alma accept work from clientele of all creeds and cultures, and they're always ready to dole out justice against human-hungry monsters that lurk in the shadows. They'll take on any case as long as the price is right. I like the detective slash mafia angle to it and the fact that it's like creatures and monsters and fantasy elements. This I am super excited for. This is already out digitally by the way. It's been out for a while and I've been wanting to read it but I thought I should wait for the physical edition because I know I'm probably going to enjoy it. I love the art on this and and I don't know what I'm going to do because my shelf is jam-packed with books right now, so I better make room for Goku Raku Guy. From Vertical slash Kodansha, we have A Brief Moment of Ichika, Volume 1. This is a shoujo series that ran for 31 chapters back in July of 2019 up until March of 2021, and it was collected in Japan across three volumes. This is written and drawn by Natsu Tadano. At the age of 16, Ichika Sendawara learned that she only had two years left to live. Now a second year college student, she she lives a busy, upbeat life despite never knowing when the end will come. Everything changes when Ichika meets Professor Yurugi. For the first time, she feels she has something to live for. But then Yurugi quietly leaves the university and Ichika is left wondering why and what could have been. A gentle love story that grapples with the deepest existential questions we face in life. Oh boy. This sounds like a very heavy read. Knowing that the end is nigh, how do you proceed from there and how do you live your life? I can't even begin to think about that. But brief moment of Ichika dares to ask those questions. So if you're interested, go ahead and pick this up. From Titan Manga, we have the manga adaptation of Speed Grapher. This is adapted into manga form by Tomozo. The original story was from Gonzo when they did the anime. This adaptation ran for 17 chapters back in 2005 and it was collected across three volumes. If you've never seen Speed Grapher and you want something a little bit quirkier and edgy with a ton of action, maybe you'll pick up the Speed Grapher. This is about a seedy underbelly of near future Tokyo. The famous Roppongi Club is a shadowy hall of secrets. When photojournalist Saiga manages to infiltrate this elite association, he discovers Kagura, a young girl whose touch bestows incredible and horrific powers. Now anyone Saiga captures on film is doomed to die, the click of the shutter as sure as a trigger pull. We're not done with the big releases. Here from Kodansha is A Sign of Affection Omnibus Edition Volume 1. This modern shoujo classic, dare I say, started back in 2019. It is still ongoing. This is written and drawn by Su Morishita, and this omnibus collects the first three volumes. It recently had an anime adaptation that I had the privilege of watching, like everybody else, and genuinely loved it. It is so endearing and well well constructed. This is the story of Yuki, a deaf girl who is used to communicating with sign language and her phone, but she's not used to English. So when a tourist from overseas asks for directions, she nearly panics until a handsome stranger steps in to help. His name is Itsuomi, and it turns out he's a friend of a friend. A charismatic globetrotter, Itsuomi speaks three languages, but he's never had a deaf friend. The two feel drawn to each other and plan a date on a romantic winter's night, but Yuki Yuki's friend is afraid that she might be setting herself up to get hurt. Could this be something real or will these feelings melt away with the snow? I seriously do recommend this. If you want a solid romance series, you 
can't go wrong with a sign of affection. It's still ongoing, but this is another way to collect the series. A three in one is pretty nice. And so far the Kodansha Omnibus line has not disappointed. So yeah, do pick this up if you're interested. Denpa is putting out Fish Society. This is written and drawn by Panpanya, and it ran for 20 chapters, collected across one singular volume back in 2016 to 2021. This is a Jose slice of life, and it tells the story of Protrag returning to their old job in the fish market to try to help improve the labor standards of this old industry. But they soon realize that the seafood world is full of so much bureaucracy, middlemen, and waste. What if they could cut most of that out by letting the fish handle so much of that grunt work? And what if the beings of the sea took back control over how their products were caught, packaged, and even sold? Imagine how liberating that would be for fish. Honestly, I've always wanted to check out Pampanya's work. I have not had the privilege to do so yet, and Fish Society sounds up my alley. I do want to check this out when it drops. It is a Denpa release, so do be patient as there will be some delays. The staff is minimal compared to other publishers, so that's one of the reasons why it usually takes a long time for Denpa books to come out. From Seven Seas Entertainment, we have a fantasy romance shoujo series. This is written by Yu Sakurai and art by Kiruki Hoshikawa, and it's a long one. We got My Sister Took My Fiance, and Now I'm Being Courted by a Beastly Prince, Volume 1. Cordelia, daughter of a countess, can't seem to get married, mostly because her little sister Priscilla keeps stealing the hearts of her suitors. Ready to resign herself to a spinster's fate, Cordelia is surprised when a handsome man suddenly courts her, and he's a prince, no less. Prince Leonhardt, who possesses the power of a legendary lion, is a widely admired man but has his own quirks, such as pursuing Cordelia because he was drawn to her scent. How cat-like is this man? A fun and feline fantasy romance. That last bit was in the official description, so sorry. <laughs> the final book that we're going to talk about for the month of April that I think will be anticipated by a lot of individuals is Fed Up With Being the Spoiled Queen's Genius Butler, I Ran Away and Built the World's Strongest Army, Volume 1. This is written by Sky Farm with art by Rega. It's an action fantasy shonen series that is still ongoing, came out back in 2021, and it tells the story of Leet. Leet isn't just any butler. His mistress, Princess Kilik, demands the impossible, and he delivers it seven times before breakfast. But one day, Leet decides enough is enough, and he flees for a neighboring land where the talented rise up through the ranks instead of languishing in thankless dead-end jobs. Under a new name, Lilt, he enrolls in a training and job placement program and rapidly discovers that easy as wax on wax off, his butlering skills make him a valuable asset. I feel like that description applies to a lot of people these days with their work, am I right? <laughs> but if you're interested, do check this out, fed up with being the spoiled queen's genius butler from Kodansha. This is also based on the hit web novel series from the creator of Rise of the Outlaw Tamer and his S-rank cat girl. Wow, there we go, folks. 22 of what I think are the most anticipated manga releases for the month of April. So that's going to be it for now. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Let me know in the comment section which of these 22 releases are you most excited for. And if there are others that I did not mention, let me know in the comment section as well. Pretty interested to check all of that out. Thank you, everybody, once again, for tuning in, for liking, commenting, subscribing, and being a part of Manga Geekdom. Truly do appreciate it. God bless. Stay safe out there. I I will catch all of you on our next video.